Traders, first of all, thank you guys so much for all the comments and uh, critiques and compliments that I got on the, on the last video where I asked for your guys' opinion. I have read over all of those and now I'm going to tailor my uh, videos to suit more of those. So uh, we have that to look forward to. Today's video is gonna be just on one tool that's not too hard to conceptualize um, from High Block Capital. And uh, this tool can show us where trap traders are and also can show us where liquidity pools have been hunted. So without further ado, let's get in. All right, traders. So first of all, let's go over what these three columns represent. <clears throat> OI profile shows the open interest increases at uh, a bunch of prices you can see here. This is over the last seven days on Bitcoin on Bitcoin from BitMEX. So it's gonna be sourcing data from BitMEX. Now what this shows, and this is gonna be the bulk of what we talk about today, is large points of open interest decrease and also large points of open interest increase. Then the final uh, chart on the far right shows the volume profile, which shows market buys and market sells. So let's go focus on this here first. And I wanna show you guys a, uh, a phenomenon, really something that we can take advantage of. So typically what, what you will find is that when open interest decreases a significant amount at a certain price, typically it's better to take a reversal trade at that price. And we can learn a lot about uh, how price moves on Bitcoin just from, from these charts. And, and I'll show you guys what I mean. So there was a massive decrease at 28.988K on um, XBT USD within the last day. So within the last day would be here. So we know that 28.988, let me just put a horizontal line and then I'm gonna tag the coordinates for that. And I'll show you guys uh, what we wanna probably do here. So we noticed that there was a large open interest um, decrease there. Where'd my line go? Oh, there it is. Yep, right here. Was that really 24 hours ago? Was that within 24 hours? Hmm. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, so 28.98, or was it 20? Yeah, 28.98. So it looks like the largest open interest decrease was actually right here at this exact point right there. This is the spot where we want to be buying. This is absolutely the spot where you want to be buying. Another thing that was pretty interesting that happened is the very bottom, we have a massive open interest decrease as well at 28.17. 28.17 is, uh, did I hit it? No, I didn't. It's a little higher than that. 28, uh, 170 is there. So at this price point, at this price point, we get a massive decrease in open interest. Open interest just represents the amount of positions that are open on a, on a futures exchange, on a futures contract. A massive decrease in open interest after volatility typically shows that a bunch of traders are getting forced out of their position by liquidation and stop losses and also panic. So we can see that this would have been just an excellent time to buy. And the reason that I'm pretty excited and I chose this video to make when I had a lot of other options to pick it is because I found that lately this has been probably the best indicator that I have found for, for indicating tops and bottoms um, for, uh, for Bitcoin. I'm also gonna show you guys it on um, Ethereum. But that was really where we saw large decreases. Yeah, we also saw a decent decrease at about 28.76. 28.76 is like right in between here. But basically this period was massive open interest decrease. So how would we trade this if we were watching this? Well, we'd first be updating that open interest profile, looking at the delta. We would watch price fall. We wouldn't really wanna buy here or here because we don't have that massive killer drop in open interest. And then when this happens, this is when we wanna start to buy. And then this happening as well is just another really good sign that we probably wanna buy as well. Now, if you're worried that the market's just going to just tank lower and lower and lower, then the strategy you actually wanna do isn't to buy a futures contract, but to buy a call contract. A call option uh, is an options play, which has limited risk. You could just buy call options when you get a massive thing that, like this that happens, and that could work out well too. Or you could take more risk and use a futures contract um, if, you, if you want that risk, okay? So that is, uh, it was, I think that's the last seven days. Yeah, that's the last seven days. Of, um, of trading with this. And another thing that you can do, I just showed one strategy of basically, all right, let's reset these axes. I just showed one strategy of how um, you can use this to really spot like liquidity pools. 
Uh, one more note I want to say on that that I think is going to help out a lot of you. Notice that open interest doesn't decrease a lot at around 29,000 or a little bit above 29,000. The very second you go below 29K, that's when mayhem begins. That's because a lot of traders like to put their stop losses just beyond psychologically round numbers. It's a very common pattern. And you can see it happen right here where there's not much of an open interest decrease uh, right above 29. But then once you go below, you know, mayhem breaks loose. Uh, same thing with this. I, I think um, if I remember this point correctly, let's go look at this. The large open interest decrease was right here, right below 31K. And this may be just giving too much edge away, but you can just see, look at that. $11 million gone. Uh, 30.981K, 30 point, uh, what is it? Well, let me read that number one again. And then we're gonna go to probably look at Ethereum to get some edge on that. 30,981, okay, let's remember that number. 30,981 was probably a decent time for a scalp buy, meaning a purchase, uh, oh yeah, I see why there was such an open interest decrease at this point. Just multiple stop loss hunts right there at that point, you know, here, here, all over, uh, here. Just a massive spot of where a lot of traders probably got stopped out was that exact level. And I'll bet you that of the three price levels that I've indicated today, at least one of you viewers has gotten liquidated or stopped out there within the last seven days. I, th I think that's very, very likely, unfortunately, incredibly likely. Um, but it would make sense to, to buy here, especially buying like here is just phenomenal. So yeah, you want to be, uh, Taking reversal trades when maximum pain is induced on the side that you want to join. So when the longs are really, really hurting, you want to wait till maximum pain occurs for the longs, then you buy. When the shorts are really, really being hurt, you want to wait for the maximum pain with the shorts, and then you short. That's how you can trade profitably, if you can pull that off. I mean, easier said than done, though, of course. Let's go look at Ethereum. So to do that, I'm going to switch over to FUSD, uh, ETHUSD on BitMEX. All right, let's go see the pattern. Oh yeah, this one, this one's a beauty because um, there's so much volatility in the last seven days. First of all, notice here that uh, there's a massive, not a massive, but a pretty large open interest decrease at the very top. You're gonna see that a lot where in a trading range over a day's period or a week period, that the most open interest drop happens at the top and the bottom as traders get forced out of their positions, as sinister as it is. Um, and we kind of see those patterns here Taking a reversal trade here would have been phenomenal uh, if you had done so. If you had access to open interest uh, profile. Let's go see what was going on here. What price is this? Oh, I have to do that. All right, I'm tr still trying to zoom in to see what the price is. This looks like 1166.5. We see a lot of um, decrease. So 1166.5 is indicated as a very likely reversal spot and look at that, yeah. 1166.5 is near the very top of the market. Why is this point so important? Because this is where the maximum pain had occurred for a lot of the shorts, and this would have been a the, the best possible time to probably have shorted with the data we had. Yeah, price went up another 1.4%, but then it went down like what? Uh, it went down like what, 25? 23, 20, 24, yeah. So that would have been just a phenomenal trade if you if you had understood open interest profile. Even shorting here would have been nice. Shorting around this, you would have been uh, nice and profit. Now let's go, the last thing I wanna to do to talk about uh, decreases in open interest through this kind of delta setup is let's go look at the one day. Yeah, so it looks like the largest open interest decrease actually happened at a very weird price. I wonder why it happened at 1031. Th this could be noise, but I just wonder why in the last day 1031 saw so much decrease. So 1031 is uh, right about, oops, I'm gonna put a horizontal light at 1031 and then let's go examine why we think that um, that point had gotten so much OI decrease from the last 24 hours. The last 24 hours is like uh, this. Yeah, so this point got a lot of decrease and it, it, it kind of makes sense why. I mean, this is not a phenomenal thing to show though. This is not really like showing too much. All right, so let's go on to the second way you can use this uh, tool. First, I want to delete this, yeah. 
Second way you use this tool is by identifying trap traders through the OI profile. So what you're gonna wanna do is let's go back to the seven day and any large points of a lot of open interest that's uh, far away from price indicates trap traders. So we know that there are a decent amount of trap traders at around the 1030 level, which means that it's probably gonna be a little bit harder for price to go, price is this dotted line right here. It's gonna be a little bit harder for price to go below this clump of open interest because we know that there are probably a lot of positions opening here. And when you have a lot of positions opening at any specific price, naturally it's a little bit tougher for price to just blast through that point. Reason I say that is because if we have a lot of people opening uh, contracts here, that means that there's a lot of longs and shorts opening. The longs are in profit and already took profit, I mean, maybe. The shorts are all burned. The shorts are probably in losing positions. So if price goes back down to rescue these shorts, I would expect at least some pullback. So that's why. Now let's look at the king of all coins to finish this off. I wanted this to just be a quick 10 minute um, episode that I think uh, should help a lot of you guys with identifying trap traders and also identifying where stop loss hunts and liquidity pools uh, for liquidations are, are, are likely. So it looks like, uh, <coughs> What I like to do is see the largest clumps, but also the largest single points of open interest. And it's actually 30,000 where we see a pretty large uh, increase in positions. Yeah, right below 30,000. So we know that there's probably a decent amount of um, trap traders at the $30,000 level. But let's go look for a level that's closer to price that we can use it maybe more for uh, scalping. So we know. The price is right here at about 34K. It's at 33,900. In this range, where is where are most trap traders? Let's go determine that, right? Well, we know that in this range, most trap traders are probably at around the 32.5 level. So there's a decent amount of shorts who are trapped at 32.5 level, meaning that this is going to probably be some good support. We have, you know, in the more shorter term, we have some trap guy, some trap players at 33.75K. 33.75K is like right here, and this actually makes perfect sense. The market came down here, and it kind of just stopped, and it really couldn't go lower. Why is that? Well, it couldn't really go lower, likely because of this right here. There are a lot of open positions at around the uh, 33,700 level, 33,750 level. And that's why price probably had a little bit of a tougher time going lower. Now, if we get repeated attempts at this low, then of course it will probably break. But even when it does break, we could get a pullback because of all the trap shorts who had shorted around here. They might want to take profit here. Them taking profit would be buying up, which would push the price up a little bit higher, of course. Another uh, point of a lot of trap traders is probably, where are you, 34.175, um, right about here. Oh, and that makes sense too. You can see that there are lower highs because there are trap traders at these highs. There are trap longs at these at these highs likely. So that, that does make sense. Now let's look at the last one day because I just want to make sure that um, instead of using seven days. Oh yeah, oh that is, that is really interesting. Okay, that's so much better. This is really exactly what I wanted. Look at this massive open interest increase at 34.17. Uh, 34.16 just about. So it looks like at 34.16, we got a lot of people entering and I'll bet you that a lot of the people who had entered right here are probably longs. So either one of two scenarios will probably occur. Either A, we just dump, or B, we go down to stop out all the longs who had bought here and then we rise. I think that one of those two outcomes is the most likely. Um, so that's just one thing to, to think about. So this is really how I trade on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this is one of my favorite tools. I like to discover where are the trap traders. Clearly, they're at 32k, and also clearly they're they're in this uh, range that I just showed you like five seconds ago. And I also like to see elements of where people put their stop losses because a large decrease in open interest, I would say, corresponds pretty well with where people put their stop losses at. And if you can start to see these patterns, then you can start to predict where you know open interest is going to decrease and where you can enter at the point of maximum pain. Um, because that's really the best way I think possible to, to trade is to buy from desperate uh, uh, longs who are selling off their positions or forced to and to short from desperate shorts who are forced to liquidate uh, or um, close their position at a very, very bad price. Uh, but yeah, so this is a paid tool. And if you're interested in getting this tool, then I will uh, give you the link in the description below.
All right, so this is the first strategy video of the new year. Uh, just focusing on this on these tools that I found very, very helpful. I hope you guys found them helpful too. Um, if you did, then um, you can also check out my courses where I talk a lot about stuff like this uh, as well, which I will also link. With that, happy trading, and I'll see you in the next one.